One of the most vital questions God can ever ask us is this. Why did you become a Christian? Did you become a Christian so that I would serve you or so that you would serve me? Because in the moment of a crisis, in the moment of a difficulty, suddenly the blessings disappear. Suddenly all those things that we stood on once are gone. And if everything was stripped away, if everything was lost, would Jesus Christ be enough? So the question you need to ask yourself at this time of crisis is will you stick it out? Will you stand fast and hold on to the Lord Jesus Christ in this difficult time? May I share something personal with you right now? I've been struggling a lot recently. I've been finding it difficult the time that we're in. And every night, pretty much without fail, I've been pleading with God, Lord, stop all of these people from dying. When I flick on the news and I hear about all of these lives that are lost, it's been bothering me. And I've been crying out to God, please bring an end to this. And to this date now, I know of three people who have sadly died from this horrible crisis. And two of them have been particularly close to me. And I do believe, just the other day, the Lord really did speak to me through 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 to 9. And it's where the Apostle Paul is, is asking God to remove this thorn of the flesh, this, this messenger of Satan. And it says, concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. The fact is this guys, we are weak right now. We are struggling and we might be swimming around in darkness but what should we always remember? God's grace is enough and he will cover us with the right amount of grace to get us through each difficult day that we're going through. Suffering Christian, this is just for you. A wise old king once penned these words Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You might have just lost your business, but you've still got to keep walking. You might be in the very centre of a pandemic, but you've still got to keep walking. Every single dream which you once had might have been snatched from you, but you've still got to keep walking. The person you love more than anyone else might have gone. They might be no more, but you've still got to keep walking. Why? Because lying down defeated won't solve anything. Self-pity, although there's a temptation to feel sorry for ourselves, you know that won't solve anything at all. And perhaps worse of all, there is a temptation at this time to try and comfort ourselves with sin to go back into the world for a thrill. But you know, once that thrill is over, you're left even more broken, even more unsatisfied, even more sorrowful. The only option we have is to keep walking. There is no plan B. The only option is to take the hand of Jesus Christ and get through this crisis with him. But you say, I can't, Joe. You don't know how anxious I am. You don't know how much I am struggling right now. Well, to you, my friend, I'd say this. Just take one step at a time. One step? What good is one step? The valley's deep, it's long, it's wide. One step won't get me very far. Well, let me ask you this, my dear friend. The Leaning Tower of Pisa was built just one brick at a time. The Notre Dame Cathedral was built just one brick at a time. So just take one step at a time, keep moving forward, fix your eyes on the Sovereign Shepherd, and he'll guide you through this crisis. He'll get you through this valley. But again, note, it says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It doesn't say, though I run through the valley of the shadow of death, though I sprint through the valley of the shadow of death. It says, though I walk. You see, the man of God, the woman of God, quietly endures the trial that God has put in their life. They know that the very hand of God which feeds them bread every morning has put this trouble in their life as well. Oh, how often we're in a hurry to rush God's lessons. Am I the only one who's been thinking, I can't wait to get to the fall, I can't wait to get to autumn, to September, when all of this is over, then I can go back to normality, I can go back to my normal life. 
But we mustn't rush the lectures of God, because when we finish, we will get a PhD in suffering, which is better than anything you can get at Harvard, and it's certainly better than anything you can get at Oxford or Cambridge. I believe the most beautiful poem which ever graced our earth was written by a man called Robert Browning Hamilton. He once said this, I walked a mile with pleasure, she chatted all the way, but left me none the wiser for all she had to say. I walked a mile with sorrow, and never a word said she, but oh, the things I learned from her when sorrow walked with me. Above all, remember this, when we get there, when we get to heaven, will there be any shadows in glory? No, the beauties and the glories of the Lord Jesus Christ will shine far too brightly for there to be any shadows in heaven. Like the children's hymn goes, shine Jesus shine and he will shine. Can I ask you a question? If tonight was your last night on planet Earth, do you know that you have a shepherd in heaven who bled and died for you? Are you one of his sheep? But come on now, talk to me. Right now, this very day, you're in darkness. You've clicked on this video because right now you are in a crisis and you don't know what to do. So what's the big lesson we've got to learn today? We've got to learn to trust the Lord God whilst the lights are off. I've got a little boy, Samuel, and right now, when we switch the lights off, he cries. He doesn't like the dark. He doesn't trust us. Even though I say to him, it's okay, baby, even though his mother says, it's okay, don't worry, he doesn't quite trust us. Does that mean because he's struggling to trust us in the dark that we don't love him? Of course not. We love him just as much as if he did trust us. And likewise, dear friends, you might be struggling to trust God in this dark time, but he hasn't stopped loving you. He hasn't stopped caring about you. He still loves you. Why? Because he's God. Dear believer, it is okay to be confused. It is okay to be scared. I think if there's one thing we should take away from this crisis, it's this. God is saying to us, I don't love you because you put on a happy face. I don't love you because you say the right things. I don't love you because you never fail me. I love you because you are my daughter, because you are my son, and I bought you with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. This may shock some of you right now, but I do believe many Christians are being too tough on themselves. It is okay to cry. It is okay to even be frustrated and ask questions to God. Look into the Bible. Look at some of the most godly saints. You've got Job, who, who cried out to God, who moaned to God. You've got David, read the Psalms and read how bitter he was at times with the Almighty Creator. And then, what about Moses? When Moses took the people out of Egypt, some of the times, the way he spoke to God, you and I would never dream of speaking that way. And yet, what was said about Moses? He was the meekest man that ever walked on earth. David was a man after God's own heart, and Job, right at the end of Job, it is said this, only you, Job, have spoken rightly about me, God. But why is it that these men, who at times spoke a little bit disrespectfully to God, why were they so blessed? I'll tell you why. Because when they cried, they directed their cry to God. They didn't go to the world, they didn't go to their friends and their family, they directed their cries with God, they stayed with God, and they did not let the devil win. The devil wants us to go out and be anxious and afraid, and to look to ourselves, to look to others to solve this problem, but it is only God who can help us through. I do wonder how many people die from a broken heart. Do you have a broken heart? Well, there's one man I want to point you to, and that's the man of sorrows who was acquainted with grief. He's the only cure for a broken heart. A Shakespearean actor was one day speaking at an after-dinner speech, and at the end of the night he said, I've got time for just one more request. Does anyone have a request? And this old doddering minister stood up, about 80 years old, and he said, excuse me, sir, do you know Psalm 23? 
And the actor said, yes, I, I do know Psalm 23. Would you mind reciting it for us all then, said the minister. And the actor said, yes, I will, but under one condition, that after I quote Psalm 23, you, Mr. Minister, you also need to quote the psalm. So away stood the Shakespearean actor and he recited it with colour, with diction, with charisma. When he'd finished, everyone stood up and gave him a standing ovation. And then he looked over and he found the doddering minister and sort of gave him a wink. It's your turn now. And the doddering minister, he needed a chair to, to help steady himself. And he stuttered and he stammered his way through Psalm 23. When he finished, the sound of clapping wasn't heard, but the sound of weeping was. And when everything had died down, the Shakespearean actor stood up again and said, Now do you see why I asked the minister to go after me? I know the psalm, but he knows the shepherd. I know the psalm, but he knows the shepherd. Dear friends, can you say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Do you have a shepherd who bled and died on a cross, taking the punishment for your sins? Do you have a shepherd who died and then rose again on the third day, ascending on high, going to heaven, and one day he's coming again to take you with him to that glorious place? If you don't know that shepherd, I plead with you today, run into his arms, for the sheep pen is open and he welcomes all sinners to himself. If you're looking for more encouragement from the Lord, please click this playlist and also please subscribe.